designers to do. So I've talked a little bit about why research is important. Let's go on and talk about how to do research, or in many cases, how not to do research. And I've thought hard before making this slide, and I've really defined two things. I've defined here the information that exists, and, and research is the act of finding this information. And of course, in order to access information, in order to, to, to perform an action and to take that information and use it, one needs to think about the ways that we can access, how we actually access it. And if you think about types of information important to engineering design and the ways that most of us have to access that information, I've broken it down into several categories. So let's take a look at these. The first type of information is books, textbooks, library books. There are all kinds of books out there that are extremely good sources of information. The nice thing about books is if somebody's taken the time to write a book, the information in it is probably pretty accurate, or at least as accurate as humans can make it. Um, we can access books um, electronically. Uh, for example, Google has some books online and anybody has access to them. And of course, there are other books that we need to have a subscription, such as from a publisher, in order to access the electronic version of the book. So books can be accessed electronically, either in open fashion that's available to the world, or what I'm calling a closed fashion, where you have to pay a subscription fee or belong to an organization. Of course, the majority of the books are in print and accessible if you have a good library. You can also find out what books exist by face-to-face -face meetings with people, by calling people on the phone, and emailing people. So these are ways not to acquire the information in books, but to learn about books. Of course, in engineering, what's very, very critical for us, and perhaps the single most important source of information in much of our design is articles, data sheets, application notes, and when you get more into research at a master's or PhD in academic level, uh, journal articles. Uh, some of this is available in an open source electronic form, such as application notes and data sheets. Most journals are closed unless you have a subscription or your library has a subscription. But articles are available for people to walk in and read and print. And of course, finding out about these articles is done through people in face-to-face, -face, phone, or electronic contacts. Um, websites is becoming an increasingly important form of information, but one needs to be very, very careful about what one gets off a of web because the threshold to get information out there is very low. And I classify many websites as hobbyists. Somebody's interested in it, but they may not know what they're talking about. Websites also are from vendors, manufacturers, and professional societies. Um, many websites, particularly hobbyist websites, are open, but you have to be careful because not all the information you get off of open websites is accurate. Closed websites, um, such as vendors and manufacturers, are much harder to get um, to as a student. Um, of course, the print doesn't really apply to websites, and you can find out about websites through people, through phone contacts, and through electronic contacts, and other groups like that. So people are a very important source of accurate websites. Another type of information is what's called tacit information. And tacit information is stuff that somebody really needs to show you. You really can't read about it accurately in a book. And so um, open electronic information, such as YouTube videos, can be somewhat of a source of tacit information. But the primary source of tacit information is face-to-face -face contact with people. So be aware that there are types of information and types of knowledge that cannot be transmitted unless you sit down with somebody and learn from them. And of course, the last type of information is organizational knowledge. These include standards, such as those put forth by the IEEE, um, how you communicate over USB bus, for example, procedures on how to do things, and internal organizational knowledge that exists within an organization. Um, some of this is available electronically and is open, such as standards. Um, many organizations have their own websites and procedures on how to th do things that are closed. They're not accessible to people outside the organization. The standards are available in print form. And of course, many of these procedures and standards you learn by talking to people face to face who show you how to do this type of stuff. So this is a very important source and phone and electronic are less important for this. So hopefully this has given you a sense of the types of information that are important for research and the different ways you can access it. So let me go ahead and conclude this brief talk with talking about some deliverables for research because we often think that research is something we do inside of our head. Um, but unless you write this down, unless you come up with something other than the knowledge inside your head, you're going to find that you are going to forget most of what you learn in research unless you write it down. So writing things down, 
coming up with a deliverable is a critically important step in research. And if you're not doing this, you're really wasting your time. So one way you can do this is simply to summarize your research, write a couple of pages about this. This is very useful to include in a report. Um, one way we must deliver our research is through a list of sources or a bibliography. And your technical writing course and other courses are going to teach you how to correctly format citations. And this really avoids the problem of plagiarism. You representing somebody else's ideas that you found is your own. And you really need to be ethical and honest about this. And listing sources helps you do this. Um, creating a journal or a lab book is also a very good way to deliver your research. It's required to show lines of intellectual property in some cases. Um, more modern forms, such as wikis, let you contribute and provide information to a large group of people who can benefit from your research. Um, engineers, we write data sheets, application notes, so when you move out into industry, these are the types of things you're going to be doing so that the knowledge and the research you've done is, is passed to others. And then finally, when you get into academia, you might consider writing a review article, taking all this work you've done in research to make a field clear or make an area clear and express it to other people in forms of an article. I hope this quick review of research has helped you understand a little bit about the importance of research and engineering design and also given you more of a sense of why you want to do research and the ways to do it, the types of information, and the active things you need to do to deliver the results of your research to an audience.